If you're wondering exactly how to use stock footage, how to really blend it seamlessly into your edits so your viewers are never interrupted from the flow of your work, then today I'm really going to dig deep into some details about it. Actually tomorrow, because right now I really need to get some sleep. I taught her to say that, rather than crying. It's a much easier way for me to wake up. Hi, sweetheart. Good morning. Good morning, Mommy. You ready to go get some coffee? Yes. Yes? I don't wake up well. I need coffee immediately. But I often have trouble crafting a proper oat milk latte until after I've had a proper oat milk latte. Thankfully, my husband crafts it for me on this casual espresso machine that he literally purchased in Italy. And he does so perfectly. Okay, I'm awake and I've had my coffee. But seriously, filmmaking is full of trickery and illusions and the use of stock footage is just one of them. And that little sequence, which did include some stock footage, is going to be the basis today for teaching you how to use stock video clips and blend them seamlessly into a larger piece of work. But before we get into the editing details, it's important to understand why creators would use stock video footage in the first place and how the sponsor of today's video, Storyblocks, can help. You may know that it's extremely common for professional video producers to use stock footage within commercial video productions. Stock video solves many problems and production limitations like time and overall budget. But these are the same limitations that online video content creators often face as well, especially in the modern internet world where cranking out high quality content is an absolute must. You usually have to decide if you want to spend the time and sometimes the money to go and get that shot that you're dreaming of, or just skip the shot and sacrifice overall quality but actually publish your video on time. Well, Storyblocks exists so you don't have to choose. They help you tell your story in the most interesting way possible by offering over 1 million assets, including stunning 4K footage, music, sound effects, images, and templates. These assets are royalty free, so once you download them, you can use them in your content anywhere you like, anytime you like. Storyblocks helps creators keep up and consistently publish videos that are full of exciting visuals and cinematic variety. With the unlimited all access plan, you get unlimited downloads so you can crank out content but spend less time and money doing so, which actually gives you a chance at publishing as often as you'd like. I think every creator who's trying to grow a YouTube channel should have a Storyblocks membership. So if you'd like to check them out, please do so via my link at storyblocks.com slash amatv. I'll also link it below. And again, thank you to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. Hello my friends, I'm Alicia and this is AMA TV, where I help you level up your video production and blogging skills. And I think that outside of professional video production, casual creators might be afraid to use stock video clips for fear that it's going to look like stock video clips were just randomly injected into their work. Because unfortunately, this is how many casual creators on YouTube tend to use stock video. So today I'm sharing all the tricks that I use to work stock video footage into this sequence so you might be able to create a similar seamless result in your work. We're going for natural and well blended within the bigger picture so your audience doesn't even bat an eye and there is no interruption in overall flow. And it all begins in pre-production. So there are two main ways to work stock video footage into your project. One is where you realize there's a gap in your footage and you have a need for a specific clip so you hop into Storyblocks and search for options, of which there are a ton. But another fun way is to dream up your video sequence and then poke around in Storyblocks first to see how you might be able to add to it. Or even better, let the stock footage inspire you. In preparing for this video, I was super inspired by this bed. I mean, there are plenty of stock video clips that I could have shot myself, but this bed in the middle of the forest is super unique and interesting, and I just had to find a way to use it. So that sort of led to the idea of having a dream prior to waking up, and then from there, I decided to do a short morning routine type of thing, complete with coffee, and all because of this bed. After the inspiration was set, I began to plan out all the possible shots that I could yeah. use for the sequence. So I laid out each detail of waking up, stirring in my bed, my feet hitting the floor, Ella calling for me, which really is a staple of my morning, 
going to scoop her up, and finally sitting down for coffee. And I asked myself, how can Storyblocks help to fill in some of these shots? So there were all sorts of options with beds, sheets, feet, curtains, floors, etc. So in order to narrow them down, I had to consider the next element, which was the overall style that I was going for. Because it was the morning and I loved this look in general, I kind of wanted to go for bright and airy, but also sort of dark and dreamy, so just kind of misty, mystical, and then I also had to transition from the dream into the actual day. So just these overall bright shots, I knew I was going for that and that helped me to narrow things down. Of course, the situation was about my family and our morning, so I would definitely film the shots of us, but that didn't mean there weren't plenty of gaps and needs for impersonal shots that stock video could fill. I really like this shot of the legs walking across the floor, and we don't exactly have curtains like that, so I couldn't get that shot myself. But even though the legs are a human form, I thought, yeah, that's me, that could be me. But to blend it more effectively, I was sure to add a shot of my actual feet immediately prior to this shot. And hopefully nobody realized the truth. Another key element to remember when integrating stock footage into a sequence is something called continuity. In films, this is essentially just consistent details, and the more a director messes around with different shots on different days and different locations, the more screwed up continuity can become. So it could be as simple as like a small piece of jewelry an actor's wearing in one scene and not the next because she ended up taking it off between shoots, or a water bottle that's half empty in one shot and then mysteriously refilled in the next, or even something sitting on one side of a table in a Scene, but then it's placed slightly differently in the next one. So when edited together, it appears to have mysteriously moved. And matching stock video clips to your own clips is very similar in that small details should be carefully considered. So with the shot of me walking across the floor, I knew that if I woke up to this floor, which is the actual floor in my bedroom, that it wouldn't quite make sense to walk on over to this one next. So I decided to change what I could for a more well-blended flow by putting this white rug down next to my bed, which was a better lead in to the more grayish whitewashed floor. So that's an example of how I changed something in my shoot to match the stock video. But on a similar thread, you could also search for stock video clips that somewhat match the things that will appear on your set or did appear on your set if you already shot it. This is especially effective if the clip you're looking for has lots of options, and in the case of coffee on Storyblocks, I did have plenty to choose from. Yum. So we just happen to have this cool wooden Lazy Susan, which I'm generally not served coffee on, but after I saw this Storyblocks clip, I thought it looked so cool, and it was just such a great match. Uh, to this thing we have, so it was very easy to select that clip over others. Plus the latte art looked pretty good. And now that we've arrived at the coffee finale, I will say that this was the only stock coffee clip that I used, believe it or not. It wasn't tough for me to film my own coffee stuff because we do happen to have this amazing machine, but I knew that fitting in the filming of the construction of the latte was enough for my husband, and I didn't also want to suddenly ask him to attempt latte art because in reality, this is the vessel that I use to drink my morning latte every single day, especially with a toddler in my lap. This thing is not so pretty, although it is bulletproof. So this entire shoot would have taken considerably longer if making latte art were a requirement. So using this clip was definitely an example of a way we saved time and stress on the set. And I'm sure latte art might not be hard for some of you to create, and if you are a food blogger or videographer, then of course I suggest you arrange it, you arrange it yourself because it is your work. But if you're just having food as like a very small part of a larger production and it's not necessarily your thing, then I definitely suggest leaning on stock footage for food because there are so many clips and different possibilities that you can use. They even have an entire plant-based section, which is pretty awesome. So most of what we've discussed so far has had to do with the preparation and pre-production and planning your shots and selecting your stock video clips. And now we're gonna get into the actual editing of it all because that's where the magic happens. So I'm gonna tell you some things that you can do to really make it all flow well. I mentioned selecting the clips to match the overall style of your sequence, but you may not always get that lucky in finding the perfect match. And this is where color grading can really make a huge difference in making certain stock video clips look better side by side or making them look better next to your footage. So let's jump into editing and I will show you a few tricks. Okay, so I'm in Final Cut Pro, but a lot of these video editing principles will apply in any software that you use. Okay, so there's several different ways to do this, but the first thing right off the bat that I just want to do, because it kind of is bothering me, is to get rid of that greenish hue on the walking across the floor clip, and I think that's gonna correct it enough to make it match the curtains, but we'll give it a shot. So to get rid of that greenish hue, we'll hit Command-6 to bring up the color board, um, and then we'll go in here and we'll go to Color Wheels. 
Now, under color wheels, we're just going to skip past this and go to color temperature, uh, which is essentially white balance, and just bring it down to give it more of a cool look. Yeah, that looks better already. And then, just to do a little bit more, we'll go into the highlights and just add like a little bit of pink in there. So that leans toward the yellow. We definitely want to keep it pink. So it's like cooler and pinker at the same time. Eh, that might be too much pink. You know what we need? Here's what we need. <laughs> we need the color board where we are going to pop up the exposure. We don't want to blow out the highlights, but I think the midtones can come up and the shadows can come down. Kind of a classic color grade. All right, so I like how that looks, but I'm just going to copy this one, throw it on top to show you. Another way we will remove, edit, remove attributes is going to take all of that off. So get us back to our baseline clip, which now looks really ugly in comparison. Again, we'll adjust that exposure a little bit to be fair, but we're just going to go do a little trick here in Final Cut. Right here, we just go to match color. And this has given you the opportunity to match your clip to the color, overall color of any other clip. And th these automatic things, whether it's auto exposure or auto white balance, they're definitely never perfect, but it might be a good jumping off point. It's always fun to kind of experiment and see what it looks like. So we'll do match color. Let's kind of go into this clip and then it's asking like, what do we want to match it to? So we'll use this as a basis and hit that. And ooh, yeah, that looks really pretty. So it's kind of got that like haze, which is actually done in the curves, which I won't get into, but it's given it that bit of a haze, which is appropriate for the morning. So I'll just hit apply match, toggle on and off. So we kind of just, it's a creative decision to decide which one um, is better. This one versus this one. I actually kind of like it without the haze. I just like the straight, color temperature or another thing that I'll do because I'm a little bit crazy about color grading is to take the clip and I have it doubled up here and then just bring down the opacity on one of the clips so it's like one of them is at half opacity and it kind of splits the difference between two different looks if you're kind of in the middle and I think that looks really good okay and then that was two of the story blocks clips being matched together but now we're going to match those clips to our actual footage of me going into the nursery and I guess first we'll just go ahead and try the match to see what it does. So we'll do, get that selected, do match color, match it to that. Okay, and then that add, really adds that haze um, to our nursery clip. Same as this, because those are pretty much a match. And let me try it. Okay, so this is the one without the haze that wasn't a match. This is the one where I just changed the color temperature. And I think that's a better, a better match. So yeah, so I'll go ahead and say apply match. It's not a better match, it's just that it is more realistic to what I want the clip to look like because we're fully awake at this point in my daughter's nursery and I just don't want it to look too dreamy. And here I'm gonna mess with the exposure a little bit, bring down the shadows a little bit, highlights up a little bit. And I'm liking this pink hue. There's a natural pink hue in her nursery. So I'm thinking maybe I'm even gonna go into here, Command six, bring up the color board go to color wheels and just pop a little bit more pink into the highlights. Okay, so here's our final sequence. And I think it flows much better color wise. Okay, so now I really have been saving the fun part for last and I think we all know what that is. It is the dream sequence. And I had a lot of flexibility with the dream sequence as would anyone because dreams are literally wild and they are anything. So I guess the main point here to remember is that your stock video footage does not need to stay the way it was when you downloaded it. You can definitely change the color grade and you can also add any effects that you want to make it personal, make it your own and make it really fit into your footage. So whether that's a speed ramp or you're you know, cropping it or adding motion. And what I did with the dream sequence, because I really was, I wanted a lot of just like random you know, kind of semi-random things in the dream. So I put them all together and I, you know, kind of color graded them to make them match, but I wasn't really getting that feel of like flow and like feel of a dream. So one thing that I love in Storyblocks is all of the overlays that you can download. They're either like overlays or textures or just really like trippy, spacey stuff. So there's like so much to choose from. And I eventually decided on using um, a light leak to kind of transition between this shot, which is mostly white, into the shot of me in bed. 
And if I were to isolate the light leak, it just looks like this. So it's just like a little pop of light coming from the corner, which is coming from the corner of my bedroom. <laughs> With light leaks, pretty much all you need to do is either lower the opacity, again, if it's just like way too bright, which they always are, so you definitely wanna lower the opacity. And you can do that, uh, hit this guy, and again, just the opacity slider. So I have it at 43%. And then you also always wanna add like a fade in, fade out transition, so it's not like so abrupt. So that is here, cross dissolve, so you just, drag that over and that'll put your cross dissolve on it. So it's a very different look from what it would look like if it was just crisp. I do like the look of it crisp, but this blended it more. So that was the goal. And then to really blend and add all the trippy stuff together, I got this one, which is just like crystally light effects. And if I black all these out, this is what it looks like um, just playing solo. And again, with this one, I brought down the opacity, so it's at about 60%. And yeah, I mean, it just happened to be perfect. It was just like long enough and just like spanned across all of the clips and that really helped tie them together. And of course I got away with this because it was a dream sequence, but there's just like so many options in Storyblocks for textures and, you know, different sorts of things. So that is one thing, it's almost like a, like a trick, you know, you throw it on top and it'll suddenly everything is tied together. And I'm gonna turn that off now just for clarity, but another fun thing you can do, easily add to your clips to kind of whew, make them flow into each other, besides choosing the ones that flow into each other based on motion, which is like a whole other thing, um, is to add a speed ramp. So that's something you do in editing. And if we look at this drone shot, obviously, of these trees, we're whooshing forward and then the hands, and the motion doesn't necessarily match, but you know, it's a dream. So I think it's kind of cool. I think it will be cool to add a little speed ramp at the end of it. So to add a speed ramp, you're gonna put your playhead. <laughs> this is why I don't do editing tutorials more. I literally don't know the correct terminology for things, but yeah, your playhead there, and you're gonna hit shift B, and that's gonna split the clip. It's not gonna cut the clip, but it's gonna split it into two parts, so then you could change the speed on one and not the other, and it's gonna add this nice like transition from one speed to the other. So then we go in here, and we'll go fast, and um, play that back. Okay, and that was fast, but it wasn't very fast. We'll go eight times. Yeah, okay, so it's just like a much quicker, like into the next scene of the hand and everything, so it's very like subliminal, psychological, because you don't want someone going, oh, check out that speed ramp, it's just kind of there, but you don't really know it's there. Very unclear, like a dream. <laughs> All right guys, so those are just a few of the things you can do to blend stock video footage into your video footage into a larger sequence and make it all look really good. Let me know what was your biggest takeaway from this video and what you would like to see next. I thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the very next video. Bye. Oh, I love it when you come and join me. Were you the superstar in the coffee sequence? Can you say hi friends? What are you drinking? Juice. Juice out of what kind of bottle? A dinosaur bottle. Dinosaur bottle. Do you like dinosaurs? Yeah. You do. You're not ticklish, are you? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Does that tickle? Does that tickle? I know.